Hello everybody, I'm Steve and welcome to Green Side Up. Now we're in the poly tunnel today, the big one. Um, need to get a few jobs done here before the sun gets too high and gets too hot in here to carry on. So we'll crack on with that. It's all to do with these hot boxes. <laughs> So, just to fetch everybody up to speed, uh, I've got some tomatoes over here. Uh, these are about two foot tall, a lot of them, and they're crimson crushed. They're an early fruiting variety, and I grow them mainly because of that. And I grow them extra early and get them down in the polytunnel early. Everything I do with these is early. Eventually, as they grow, um, I will get side shoots off them and I'll replant those and make extra plants for free, which will go outside. And because they're an early fruiting variety, I will get a second crop off those second tomatoes, all from that one set of tomatoes over there. Now, they desperately need potting on. They've been in this hot box down here for about two or three days now. Uh, so they're acclimatised. I'm going to pot them on today. But I also need to sort out these hot boxes the one that that the tomatoes are in a weed did a couple of weeks ago and you can see already that weed is popping up already in here and this is the no dig box this box over here is the dig box and i'm just going to take the lid off now and show you what's inside because i need to sort this one out so I've taken the lid off and moved that away up here. This is the front of the tunnel that comes off. It's just a couple of bolts here and the other end. That goes through into this frame, into that panel, and a couple of wing nuts hold it on, so I don't need to rely on tools to take it off. So take that away, immediately you're looking at the weeds and thinking, God, what a state. But this is the good thing. If you look at the, if I stand next to me, see the size of these things. I mean, it's up past my knees. And this is the reason why it's so good for my tomato plants. It's a protected structure in the middle of the tunnel, so it's away from the edges. So even if this tunnel does get a frost, it still stays moderately warm in here. The whole tunnel as a whole will heat up during the day and keep that volume of heat longer into the night than a, perhaps a smaller tunnel or greenhouse would and the fact that i've got a great big hot box thing here as well it does exactly the same thing and it warms the soil underneath it as well so i can bring my tomato plants down here and i know that once i've got a nighttime temperatures of four five six degrees it's warm enough in there for the tomatoes to thrive and that's the important thing so anyway you can see the weeds growing in there that's because the environment is perfect for them to grow uh, so i need to clear this out anyway so we'll get on with that now <laughs> so this bed has been uh, dug over raked up and it's now ready now the um, hot box itself is six and a half foot long and it's uh, three and a half foot wide and the bed is, itself is 18 inches longer. Now last year I had that hot box centered directly over the middle of that bed and I had a couple of areas, both ends, about nine inches I would say, uh, that weren't used, wasted. But I figure if I put it this way this year, then I've got a little border just down the side there on the right hand side that I can use for something else. So I know that these crimson crush plants are protected in this hot box environment within my polytunnel down here on the allotments. So what I'm doing is I'm planting four in this hot box along the back and four in the next one also along the back, which will leave me still with a good dozen or more spare plants should these fail and need replacing. So if another frost is predicted, what I'll do is um, I'll come down and take the, the uh, crimson crush that are still mobile. I'm going to pot them on. They'll be in trays and I'll just take them home to protect them. These may or may not fail. If they fail, I've got replacements. So I've taken off the seed leaves and the lower leaves and I am deep planting it. So that's a good sort of eight inches down. Can go a lot deeper if you want to, but that's, I feel, good enough for me. So there, that plant's just needs a water now and it's got a good start. Just a bit of blood fish and bone in with it. That's all it needs. Doesn't need any other feed in there for now. You'll change to another feed later when the plant starts flowering, which for these plants will be 
probably a month's time and they'll be, be up here and we should have flowering trusses on them in a month's time. So there we have it, four crimson crush planted. They're deep planted, they're about six, eight inches down. They're fertilised with blood fish and bone only. That's pretty much all they should need. Uh, and it's a balanced food, <coughs> excuse me, it's a balanced food uh, for what that plant will need in its, at least its first couple of months. Um, right, in, in front of that, there'll be another row of um, four tomato plants, probably around that mark there. And they were the, the plants that I've got as backup for the Crimson Crush at home. They are Ildi. And they're a little orange, almost like a pear-shaped. No, 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 they're not pear-shaped. They're more olive-shaped um, tomato. And they're gorgeous. And the thing about them is you get sort of somewhere between 60 and 80 fruits per truss. So little orange tomatoes, plenty of them. And they are a lovely flavour. So I'll have four plants in front of those Crimson Crush. And they'll be at different sizes, so the back will get the back ones, the Crimson Crush will get the sun. Um, and then the Ildis will go in front. This little area at the front here is where I plant my Tajits, which are, they are a marigold, but the flowers are so much smaller. They're about the size of a, a penny, about that sort of size, and you get lots and lots of them. Those who, gr who saw me growing tomatoes here last year will remember them. I had a massive yellow flowers all the way down the front, of these two tomato beds and many people commented and if you want to you can go and look for Tajits now I'll put the name up on the uh, film now and uh, it's not too late to sow them and get them going so you can order them or go to your local garden centre and buy some and get some growing and they deter white fly away from your tomato plants so that's it but the bed up next to it is going to be exactly the same as this one except for I'm doing a trial just to see the difference that next bed up is now a no dig bed I've put uh, a load of garden compost up there compost I've made myself as opposed to bought compost and I'm going to plant four of these now uh, the crimson crush at the back of that hot box now and so it will be identical both will be identical and we can see through the season the difference between the difference the, the dig and the no dig, anyway. <laughs> now, the rest of these Crimson Crush plants can have a bit of a birthday and get potted on now. So I'll just take off the seed leaves and the lower leaves. Incidentally, we, you probably can't see them. I've got side shoots starting on these already, so it won't be long before I'm taking them off to make new free plants. So just pop them up, pop them on to a bigger pot and then I'll put them back in the hot boxes to grow on. The seed leaf and the lowest leaf off. And then just fill them up with compost. These tomato plants, these will fill these pots probably two weeks, I would say. There we go. You can see these are bonny looking plants already. Haven't yet really decided where these ones will go, but I'll find somewhere for them. No doubt they'll be outside. So there we go, as you can see, they're great looking plants. You might be able to see, see the uh, side shoots coming already on these. So I'll crack on with these. So this is the no dig tomato bed. I've got four crimson crush planted at the back. The rest of them I've just potted on as you saw. Now I'm just going to put this front back on. They've all, it's all been really well watered. 
and put the lid back on too and then we're good to go and I won't need to water these now props for about I would say two three days really and I'll just push it slightly to the back there's like a three inch gap at the front there just wide enough to get my arm in and that's for ventilation so we're sorted now just a, a note of caution here you may be watching this video and saying well Steve's planting his tomatoes out I'm going to get mine out this weekend and that's all well and good but as I say a note of caution unless you can provide conditions for the tomato plants where you think they're going to thrive then don't bother just yet wait another couple of weeks and you'll be much better off and in a better position I'm always trying to break boundaries doing tests trials and messing about with stuff trying to do stuff that I shouldn't really be able to do and you know that gives me a kick and that, that's why I do it so if you can't provide sort of conditions like I've provided for my tomato plants in there and also have a backup and then backup for, for the backups then you could get yourself into into problems and it could end all end up in tears so I've got that and I'm prepared to say oh well that didn't work dig them up and plant the next lot and I can do that quite easily and I know those plants will catch up again I'm just trying to do something a bit different a bit early uh, just trying to push the boundaries but anyway you'll do as you see fit anyway but um, that's it for this video I hope you found it informative um, do subscribe if you're new to this channel and if you've just subscribed just recently welcome to Greenside Up and um, yeah thanks for joining us see you all very soon take care stay safe and I'll see you very soon Toronto